One. Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Over there, we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, tired but good. We're all tired after the long night of hockey, a long night of finding out all this information, going through it all. Yeah. Um, we're back here for another Blackhawks video to the uh, two statements. First, to the Blackhawks fan that commented on our last video. If you don't have nothing nice to say at this point about our quality of video, we are loud, we are clear, we are crisp and everything. Our black ground, backgrounds are blurred because we want <laughs> nothing to do with the, the people behind us. They have nothing to do with this. This is our opinion and our opinion alone. If I do most of the talking, it's my opinion. In my opinion, alone. <laughs> if John agrees with me, then our opinions match. But nonetheless, what I want to say is first, uh, to, to don't want to mess up his name here, to Kyle Beach. Um, we stand with you, brother, as part of the hockey community. Yep. Um, if you ever need anything, Contact the Milwaukee Admirals. They will get you right in touch with us if you ever need anything. And just an ear to listen. If you need it, we, we're here. Right. So they will get you in touch with one of us. Um, so those are the two things. Second, The final thing I want to say is the Milwaukee Admirals, Nashville Predators, Florida Everblades, and Hockey Locker have nothing to do with this video. This is not a reflection of them in any manner. So that is your, there is your public disclaimer. The background again is blurred out. It is not poor quality. By the way, if I go blurry or John goes blurry at any point in time, it is Zoom's quality, not ours. Right. <laughs> so if you want to be mad at anybody, be mad at Zoom. So there's that. While we get into this, this happened in 2010. I yep. didn't talk about it then, but I'm going to talk about it now. To sweep it under the rug for 11 years is bad, bad, piss poor management of any type of sexual misconduct that happens by anything. No person, no cup, no championship, no nothing is more important than protecting the people you employ. Right. This man was a first round pick, Kyle Beach, a good hockey player, a good person. If you want to know anything about it, just ask a buddy of ours, me and John, Mr. PC Labrie, will tell you all kinds of good stories about Kyle Beach. Um. I've had the luxury of having conversations with a lot of people about Kyle in the past 48 hours that are, are, are either in the game or outside of the game. I'm not going to name them all, but PC was one of them. And PC was his best friend when he was in Rockford and has nothing but kind words to say about Kyle and that yeah. he was crying when it came out and that it hurt him because he was a good person. And, there, and, and, and that's the problem. When bad things happen to a good person, it is not fair. Right. The other part, the fallout. Let's just talk about the fallout real quick. All right. The one that what we do know, okay, what we do know so far, what we know so far, Joe Quinville, fired. Stan Bowman, fired. Blackhawks fined $2 million by the league. I right. don't think they're done yet. I think there's more to the investigation, and only time will tell. Right. Another thing we do know, when it comes down to this, and it really does, at the end of the day, when we sit here and look at this, this should have been handled 11 years ago. Yep. The minute it went to Bowman's desk, should have gone straight from his desk to Batman's desk. 
and to the news desk and to the police's desk or the police officer's desk of the Chicago PD and their sex crime division. Now, now, anyone who had anything to do with this, of the uh, of sweeping it under the rug, by law, by law, and, I, and I'm talking by standard law because I, I took law at University of Wisconsin for two years. So trust me, by law, you have to, if you are aware of a crime in this nature, and you don't say something and you sweep it under the rug because somebody else involved is a good person, it's gonna hurt them. Right. You're talking about being an accomplice at that point. It's a really gray area, but it's a very true statement. Right. If I go and do something illegal, and John knows about it and does nothing about it and it comes back that I end up doing jail time for it and I said well hey this guy knew well I said hey John knew that makes him an accomplice he'll not get as much time as me but he'll still get time he'll get charged with something and this is a problem because you're talking about an entire hockey team that probably knew. Right. Because they talk. You're talking about family members of his that knew and were scared. That's not going to get you in any trouble. Being scared is not going to get you in trouble. But to say that guys like Taves and Kane didn't know for them to say that, I call BS on that one. I really do. I'm going to have to. Because by the comments that Taves made in his meetings that became into the press, all he did in his meeting was tote Bowman. Tote Bowman. Uh, Bowman, 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 Bowman. Like Bowman's a god. But nobody's above the law. All right. No hockey teams above the wall. I love hockey. And I would rather watch my team lose every game than do this. Right. Because it's a black mark on your team history and legacy. There's a, a mark on that cup now. Brad Aldrich, the man who's guilty of doing, well, I don't know if he's guilty, but uh, being accused of doing this. I know he's guilty in the Michigan thing that happened. They found him guilty in that already. So kind of hard to not agree here that he would right. be, but it, it's throwing stones almost in a way of being, you cannot sit there and act like this didn't happen. Right. 11 years and not say nothing. Nobody said nothing to nobody until May of 2021, this year. Nobody said nothing. Right. That's impossible. That means that they swept it under that rug so far that if he wasn't going to say something, if he did not come out after what happened in Michigan and say something, then at this point, you're looking at a massive cover-up because you're winning championships. Right. Now, one of the things... Um, that was said by him. Uh, Kyle Beach said, 
So in 2010, I finished my junior season with the Spokane Chiefs. I was originally called up by the Rockford Ice Hogs of the AHL following our conclusion there. I believe we lost in the first round of the playoffs. Several of us were called up as black aces. I think any time that you could get that phone call, you're going up, whether it's to play or to be a practice player, but to be a part of that for the first time besides training camp. It was a was an extremely special moment for me and my family and the next step of me pursuing my NHL dream that I dreamed about and worked for my entire life. So unfortunately, a, a couple weeks after those memories and taint were tainted and changed forever. Those are his words. Um, Rick uh, Westhead of TSN uh, Sports Center, um, which is ESPN Canada, um, coming out of those moments when it took, when the abuse took place, I can't imagine the subsequent days were like, well, before we get to how it affected you over the last 11 years, what was it like in the immediate days after confusion? What were some of the emotions you were feeling? Um, and uh, Kyle Beach replied with, uh, to be honest, I was mostly scared, mostly fearful. I had my career threatened. I felt alone and dark. Sorry to recall it. At these, it's tough to recall these moments. I felt like I was alone and there was nothing I could do, nobody I could turn to for help. And I didn't know what to do as a 20 year old. I would never dream or could you ever imagine being put in a situation by somebody who's supposed to be there to help you and make you a better hockey player, a better person and continue to build your career. I was just scared alone and had no idea what to do. Um, man, to be honest, I, I don't know how to feel about that. I want to cry a little because no 20 year old out of juniors with no experience in the professional game. And you got a guy here taking advantage potentially, I'm not gonna say he's guilty because I can't, I'm not the judge, jury and executioner on this one. But I can say if he is guilty, then, you know, I wanna see the justice system. If he's not guilty, the justice system will make their decision there as well. Right. Um, but to be honest, for somebody to have to carry this for 10 years, um, I can only speak of, on, on how I'd feel, and I know I'd probably feel in the same spot he's in. Right. Um, beyond this, uh, he asked him uh, who the first person he told was, was Paul Vincent. Um, Paul Vincent was there, um, if I remember correctly at the time, he was their special teams coach or player development coach. He was a coach there. In, in the Blackhawks organization. Um, the next year, he went to Manitoba to coach the Moose. Um, so uh, there was that. Um, he told Paul Vincent in a hotel, uh, in San Jose in a hotel, uh, we were traveling with the team. Paul Vincent is an amazing man I've seen. And I've seen everything he's done since this came out public. I don't have the words to express my appreciation for Paul. He's tried to do everything he could back then. When this came to public light, he stood his ground and spoke the truth. It is men like him that make hockey great. I agree. Paul, Paul Vincent is a great hockey mind and a great person from what I'm seeing here. I don't know the man personally but I can just speak on what I'm seeing. Right. 
Um, if the man's standing for you and doesn't have a fear of being punished, because um, that's a risk right now, you know. Um, the Blackhawks are an original six team. Nothing scary than going up against an original team of any league. Right. I mean, I can't imagine how scary the scary that is, especially during a playoff run. Yeah. All right. And you said you could talk to anybody in the Boston area. I was flown out to Boston a, as a prospect after I was drafted to work with Paul. And ever since then, we've had a good relationship. I've enjoyed working with Paul. And he's probably the most highly regarded skills coach there is in, in the Boston area. Not only the Boston area, but the hockey world. That's probably why he's the head coach of the now Winnipeg Jets. Now. Right. Um, Rick Westhead then asked, when did you tell your family and how much did you tell them and what was their reaction? Um, his response was, I don't exactly remember when I told them, but it was shortly after. Yeah, it happened. It had happened in the summer. My mom cried for days. She felt like she was responsible. She, like she should have protected me like any mother would or father for that matter. Um, and there was nothing she could do. After the first conversation with them, we never spoke about, about it again until recently. I've never brought it up with, and they've respected my privacy. They asked if I was okay and let me talk about it when I wanted to talk about it, respectfully so. Right. Um, he felt like his career was threatened and that's the bottom line of it. And if I, if I had that in my head, there was no way I was gonna perform, perform at the top of my abilities. After, all right, so then we get to management. Okay, so then we get to um, James Gary. James Gary was one of the second people to know told by Paul Vincent and by Kyle Beach. They both walked into his office. He was the mental health hockey coach at the time for the Blackhawks, uh, known as Doc Gary. Um, all righty. All righty. So it happened. Uh, it was about a week in that time frame. I'm I'm roughing it here because I don't want to read the whole interview. If you want it, go to TSN on YouTube. Full interviews on there. Um, when they won the cup and were parading around, Doc told him not to say anything, and that it was okay. Let's put this way. Doc Gary told me that it was my fault. I put myself in that situation. And the combination of the these and him being paraded around and letting him take the cup to a high school with kids after they knew what happened, um, there are not words to describe it. There really isn't. Right. I could be honest here. This is mental skills coaches, okay, and a counselor for an NHL team. When something like this happens, team be damned. It does not matter. You cannot be afraid for your job. Right. And you shoot it all the way up to the ladder. Because for some reason or another, I, I just, I have this gut feeling in my stomach. It never got to the ownership. I just think that it never got that far. And, and, and if it didn't get that 
far. Why not? You know? Right. So like we said, we're sorry and we're tired. Um, but we're, we're doing this one for him. Um, I really think that this will move hockey forward. And, and right. I hope a healing process begins soon. Yeah. From this. Not only for hockey fans, but for him. Right. Um, because I know I've talked with Admirals fans today and they're hurting from this. It hurts the, the hockey community as a whole. Not yes, just it does. Because we could not have imagined this from the Blackhawks. Right. Now, uh, as fans, and John as a fan of Colorado and me as a fan of Nashville, um, as our true, like, our hearts in their, those teams, don't like the Blackhawks. But this has nothing to do with that. No. This has to do with people. Yep. I take the logo and the team aside. That means nothing. They keep throwing the Blackhawks this, the Blackhawks that, the Blackhawks. Look, strip the team away and look at the people inside it. Yeah. And those are the people you blame. You can't blame a logo. You can't blame a name. You can't blame the color scheme. You can't, you know, that doesn't right. fall back on those people. Doesn't matter if that's what they were wearing then, that's what they're wearing now. Those, the people who did this are horrible. All right. So, um, in other news, he is currently playing in Germany for the Black Dragons in the third league. In, uh, it's a small club in the third league in Germany. Um, they treat him very well. He's, he loves it there. He, they do everything they can to make him feel safe. He's happy, and he's, he really appreciates where he's at in his career now. So, I mean, some vindication has happened there. Um, also, he's, uh, they asked him, uh, um, what kind of impact this had on him over the last 11 years. And, and from here, I'm going to move on to the next part of this, a timeline because uh, I'm not going to give you guys the full interview. Like I said, I'm only going to go into this. Um, I want him to be able to have a healing process, and I'm only going to go so far. So he said, and I'm going to read you word for word here. So I'm going to use his words. Not, not mine, not, not an ad-libbed version, his words. So Kyle Beach said this, to be honest, Rick, I've just began that process. I've suppressed this memory, buried this memory to chase my dreams and pursue the career that I loved and the game that I love of hockey. And the healing process has just begun. Yesterday was a huge step in that process. I agree there. Um, but until very recent, I did not talk about it. I did not discuss it. I did not think about it. And now that I'm beginning to heal and I begin to look back, it definitely had impacts on my life. I did stupid things. I acted out. I snapped. I did things I could never imagine doing. I relied on alcohol. I relied on drugs. I'm just so relieved with the news that came out yesterday that I've been vindicated and can truly begin to heal or begin the healing process. Those were his words. Mm -hmm. um, knowing as a person who battles with depression and other kinds of things, and I've had demons, as I call them, uh, alcohol, drugs, at, I've acted out, I've snapped. Um, I think me and John have both uh, lived on that side of the world before. Yeah. Um, it is a very sad and lonely place. 
and no person should ever have to visit that alone. Uh, I'm no. grateful for my wife being there. Um, Don's probably grateful for his wife being there. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Kyle's family was there with him the entire time, no matter what. But I personally think that for a man to go through all this, I hope that he could get back to the hockey player he wants to be, not playing in the third league, maybe get a shot at the AHL again someday, be the hockey player he wants to be, and be happy. Um, I, I, that's what I my wishes for him are, my wholehearted wishes. Right. Uh, that this can maybe give him a chance at a second chance. Um, I guess I'm going to read this part because this part's actually quite interesting. Uh, Rick West had asked him, Kyle, I'll talk to you about the healing process in a second, but the court documents show that you said that some of your teammates start, after the fact started using homophobic slurs for legal reasons, we won't name names, but how often was that happening? How frequently was that happening? Where was it happening and how soon after the assault did it happen? Word spread, and Kyle replied with, word spread pretty quickly. I do believe everyone in the locker room knew about it because of the comments that were made in the locker room. They were, they were made on the ice as well. They were made around the arena with all different people of all different backgrounds, players, staff, media, and with players, staff, and media in the presence. So, eek. And so, Rick West had replied to that, obviously, because, like I said, this is an interesting conversation, which yeah. is why... I think me and John are probably going to watch it on our own time just to hear the whole thing um, and see his natural reaction to all this. Um, uh, Nick Boynton and Brent Sopel, uh, both players that played for the Rockford Ice Hogs, and they were teammates. So when they then teammates, Nick Boynton and Brent Sopel said everybody knew in that locker room, you think they were telling the truth. Alvich replied with, I know 100%. I believe both of them. I haven't spoke with either of them since the last time I would have ran into them at a training camp. I do not know them, nor or I do not have a personal relationship. I don't have their phone numbers. I have not spoken to them. For them to come forward to corroborate, ah. I'm trying to use say this word correctly. Collaborate. Collaborate are the story. I owe them a huge thank you, as do I, Paul Vincent, and many, many others. Former Blackhawks assistant coach John Torchy, uh, former uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. My family, friends, my girlfriend, Bianca, for being there for me every single day because reliving this and having to dig back to those memories for the investigation, for the lawsuit, for having to tell my story over and over has not been easy. It's been the hardest thing I've ever gone through, but at the same time, it's a huge step. And I now, I, re I realize now how, yeah, I realize now in the healing process, but for the, those individuals to come forward early on, with absolutely nothing to gain, they're heroes to me. They really are, They because they, when I was alone, I was afraid, I was scared. I didn't think I could turn to anyone. Even when this first came out, the Blackhawks denied it. They said they did an investigation they said my claims were meritless to me. I took that as them saying to the world that I was a liar, that I was lying. 
and to have these individuals like Paul Vincent, Nick Boynton, Tarchi, Sopel come forward, I knew, then I knew I wasn't alone. I could never thank them enough for doing that because it gave me the great, they gave me the strength to continue going forward. Going forward um, with issues like the US gymnastics, US soccer, um, and, and issues like that with the Blackhawks, with things that happen there. Um, um, you know, uh, it is really hard when you have, now this is one of the things I'm gonna say, and, and this is all, this is from Rick Westhead. So for him to be saying this, I guess I'm gonna have to call it back because, you know, he's, but I wanted to say this, when Brad Aldridge did leave the Blackhawks in the summer of 2010 and he went on to work with the U.S. Hockey National Development Program, actually, as well as working at the Miami University in Ohio, and then in 2013, when he would end up in Houghton, Michigan, where he sexually assaulted a 16-year-old high school player. And I wonder if that player is watching now and what's your message to him? Kyle Beach said, I'm sorry, like five times in a row. He didn't do more to protect him. And I'm not going to go any more into that because of being overseas. Um, it, 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 this is really a hard decision for everyone. This tarnishes Stan Bowman's legacy as far as that is considered. I guess you could say that. Um, now, I do know on other news of fallout, like I said, if you want to know any more about this, please check out the interview. Um, uh, it's getting late over here. We got a game at 1230 tomorrow that we, we have to watch and cover. So I, I apologize for cutting this a little short and there will be further videos because I'm sure there's going to be more. Right. Um, but I, I just wanted to get into a few things first. The Hockey Hall of Fame is having further dialogue on removing Aldridge's name from that 2010 cup. Yep. So there's that. Um, I'm going to give you a quick dialogue of how this went. May 13th, an unnamed player who was a member of the Blackhawks filed a lawsuit. Or May 13th, filed a lawsuit against the Blackhawks and Aldrich. June 1st, a former hockey player was um, former high school hockey player alleged he was assaulted by a uh, former Chicago Blackhawks coach is suing the NHL for allegedly providing positive employment despite noting that he was a sexual predator. Um, this is TSN's report. I'm only reading it word for word, so I'm just a messenger here. I'm just giving you the timeline. Um, I'm using alleged words because, like I said, there's no criminal report. Uh, the Blackhawks management allegedly refused to file a report to the police during the 2010 playoffs. This happened June 17th after two players claimed the video coach had uh, after two players claimed a video coach with the franchise had sexually assaulted them, so now that's two. Uh, June 23rd, alleged sex, the alleged sexual assault of two former Blackhawks players was an open secret among the staff, both within and outside the hockey team department. 
uh, former marketing said that said that and an inter former team marketing official knew about it. Um, on June 25th, a lawyer for or the former Blackhawks player alleged he had and another teammate were sexually assaulted. Um, uh, by the uh, video coach. Um, a former Blackhawks association coach confirmed that the me a meeting took place in the 2010 playoffs just with management to discuss the uh, uh, alleged sexual assault. Um, that happened on June 26th. On the 28th, a former Blackhawks player alleged the video coach assaulted him and he told his family about the abuse. He's still struggling 11 years later. July 9th, a lawyer for the team said that the video coach says that the players will not cooperate with the team financed investigation. Uh, July 13th, defenseman Brent Sopol said um, almost every player and coach knew about it, uh, about Brett Aldrich. July 19th, after jail for a sex offense of the video coach Brad Aldridge uses interns to build business. Uh, July 22nd, former Blackhawks player describes it in a new court filing. Content warning, the article, it's really gruesome. Uh, August 6th, a lawyer from a lawyer for former Blackhawks player at asked about the U.S. Center for Safe Sports Investigate to investigate the Blackhawks and the U.S. Olympic team, Stan Bowman, for alleged cover-up of, uh, of the event. Um, August 12th, uh, former Blackhawks skills coach Paul Vincent gives his inv investigators his account. Uh, September 13th, an, Ameri an American think tank that does studies on child sex abuse and prevention, um, asking about the uh, U.S. Olympics, Paralympics community to suspend Bowman from his position at the U.S. Olympic men's hockey team, which uh, September 15th, the U.S. Olympics reject the American think tank. Uh, in September 30th, a court filing well, alleged that Brad Aldridge's day with the, the cup was a tantamount, tantamount, I think that's the word they used, to a job reference that would help him get a job in hockey history. That means the Blackhawks pretty much said, have another job. We'll, we'll give you a, rec of, a reference. Um, the Blackhawks hold a detailed briefing. In, uh, this was October 26th, which was four days ago. Um, that announced that Bowman has stepped down. Hours after stepping down, Bowman stepped down of the, as the GM of U.S. Hockey. Um, and the U.S. is actually talking about pulling out from the uh, Beijing Olympics in general now. Um, since then, John Quinville has stepped down um, as coach of the Panthers. I'm sure that at this point, there's going to be more fallout at this point, but that is all we know outside of uh, the uh, ramifications of this really have turned to if you know something about something like this and you don't turn it into the league, kiss your job goodbye. Right. Because Batman's going to have you begging for mercy by the time he's done. Um, because this is just unacceptable at this point. I, I apologize if this video is really long and we are really tired over here. 
but this is something that hurts in here for me because as a former player and John as a former player, we could not imagine getting that far right. and having this happen to us. Right. You know, I, I, I know that getting to college was hard. I, 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 it took days and days every day at the rink, three, four times a day sometimes. Oh, um, to get to where I was, and, and it, it hurt a lot. I hurt a lot. Tore my ACL four times. So I know about the pain and suffering to get just to college, let alone talking about being drafted and going to the NHL and, you know, these all these things, they hurt so much because to know that this this young man's life could have been a different way had it been handled. He could have been in the NHL. The Blackhawks could have won four more cups for all he they knew. But because they chose the way they did, they get whatever's coming to them, as I put it. <laughs> um, in other news, um, I'm going to get to a league breakdown at some point in the next couple of days, in the next coming weeks of just doing a monthly breakdown of who's hot and who's not at the beginning of the year. Um, we're going to do a monthly breakdown. Um, you guys will probably see that on the, on the second from us. Um, uh, Halloween and Monday we're off. So we're going to take those days to be with our families. Um, so given that, uh, I would like to thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully, uh, um, by the way, for YouTube, I'm going to do something specific. The TSN interview will be down in the link down below um, in our description. So I'm going to take the TSN link and put that down in the description. So if you guys want to see it for yourself, be my guest. If you guys want to hear me talk about it, well, you've got this far. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you guys tomorrow. Hopefully see you guys for the long haul on this one. Hopefully it wraps up soon because I don't know how much more my heart can take on this one because it really hurts my soul as a, like I said, as a hockey person. And, yep. and we are really disgusted and disappointed in this. And as you can see, we're not, you know, even though our teams were, we're not good tonight, this hurts more than that. Right. On, a, on, a, on an emotional level, it hurts. Games can make you tired, frustrated, and, 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 and aggravated. But when you get emotionally hurt, it, 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 it I, I can't, like I said, I can't imagine what this this young man is going through. Well, he's not a young man anymore. This was 11 years ago. So he was 20 then. So this was, he's 31 now. He's my age. You know, I, I look at it as the, what if that was me? You know, that's the way I say it. I played. What if it was? What if it was anybody else? If you're in my age or John's age bracket, it could have been you. All right. You know, and, and that's the way I look at it. Um, I commend the Blackhawks on their uh, acceptance of Bowman's resignation. I hope that they take accountability for whatever happens to them and, and accept it because the repercussions of the decisions made by your staff automatically fall back on the ownership. They're the people that employ them. And for Rocky Wirtz, that's probably the worst news he can hear is that it's all going to fall back on his team. And that's going to cost them money. And right now with COVID, it's scarce, really scarce. So I'm, I'm not toting him because I don't know if he knew or not. And I'm not really in the mood to take people's word for it right now on it. It's really hard to take somebody's word on this one because nobody wants to get caught up in this mess. Right. So, and, and it's not a mess from Kyle. It's a mess from the Blackhawks. 
their front office, their management, their organization. I don't even know if you, you can't count out the leadership on the team and the players themselves in that, that are still around. So with that, um, like I said, thank you for watching. Me and John are going to enjoy the what's left of our night now that it is 1 a.m. Yeah. Enjoy your Saturday. See y'all later.